Hey, what's going on tech enthusiasts, Bo HD here, and we're gonna talk about all of the features of the upcoming Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge before they are official later this month. Now, if you expect the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge to be radically different than their predecessors, you're gonna be disappointed. The only major physical differences uh, will be with the home button, volume rocker, and proximity sensors. The home button will be more rectangular or longer in shape. The volume rocker will shift to the right-hand side of the device, and the proximity sensors will also shift to the right-hand side of the speaker grill on the front of the device. The camera bulge should also be reduced ever so slightly on the back, and the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge should also feature more subtle curves along all four edges of the device. So previously we had uh, subtle curves along the left and right hand sides of uh, each phone, uh, but on the top and bottom sides we should see some more subtle curves to kind of help create a more round and uniform experience or just feeling in the hand. Samsung may very likely include a micro SD card slot uh, for expandable storage in the S7 to kind of help users forget about the uh, lack of removable battery and lack of micro SD card slot in the previous version. Um, so that'll be a very welcome new feature. Samsung may even bring back IP67 uh, and IP68 water and dust resistance, which we saw on the Galaxy S5. Uh, but I would say for the most part, the S7 and S7 Edge uh, will greatly resemble the S6 and S6 Edge in terms of uh, overall appearance. It's the sheer size of the Galaxy S7 Edge that I think will truly stand out the most. Uh, it'll be much larger than its predecessor as it will feature a larger and more durable 5.5 inch display. Samsung may even offer some sort of promotion uh, for screen repairs in the first year after your purchase. The displays themselves will measure in at about 5.1 inches for the Galaxy S7 and 5.5 inches for the Galaxy S7 Edge. Um, and they will be 2K QHD AMOLED displays. Um, and you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it or don't break it. Samsung displays are, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, there's really no need for them to feature more pixels um, at the sacrifice of performance or battery life, in my personal opinion. In terms of performance, they'll be packing a Snapdragon 820 processor or Exynos 8890 octa-core processor with four gigabytes of RAM. You know, it really depends on your region. If you're in North America or Europe, uh, we can certainly expect to see the latest Qualcomm processor, but to be honest, both processors will not slow you down. Uh, they're super fast, blazing fast, uh, as indicated from the leaked benchmarks, um, which you might see here or I'll link down below. So I mentioned the camera sensor may be thinner and or it may be protruding less from the phone. So we don't know if the camera sensor itself will be thinner or if the device will be thicker. Um, we don't have all the details as of yet, but we can expect there to be a 12 megapixel rear facing camera sensor with an f1.7 aperture that should deliver excellent low light photos and super milky depth of field shots. Um, and add in the idea that Samsung may use the Sony IMX300 camera sensor as well as its own ISO cell sensor uh, for the S7 and S7 Edge. Uh, both devices could feature one of the best smartphone camera sensors on the planet. One of my biggest complaints with the S6 and S6 Edge was the battery life. The battery life was pretty awful. Um, the devices would last me anywhere from two to three hours of screen on time, which is uh, certainly not up to my standards. It's, uh, I use my phone way more than that, way more than I should. Um, but what's exciting with the new generation is that Samsung should include a much larger 3000 milliamp battery um, with a slightly thicker build. So um, I did reference the thicker build earlier. We'll probably see a slightly thicker build, which I'm totally all aboard, um, totally fine with. Uh, there will be fast charging via a USB type C cable. Uh, which will be certainly nice to have. Now the S7 and S7 Edge will be running Android 6.0 Marshmallow out of the box. That is a given. Now I don't expect the speakers of each device uh, to be radically improved. Uh, they should remain in the same position and uh, feature a similar sound quality as in the S6 and S6 Edge. Uh, what we may see though is actually a high quality stereo DA converter um, from ESS technology for audiophiles. Um, so it would feature a 129 decibel dynamic range and uh, negative 120 decibel harmonic distortion. But on the software side of things, we can expect TouchWiz to be further refined and further improved. Samsung actually hired several Google engineers to help optimize TouchWiz to help it uh, better compete with iOS. So I think the most significant new addition will actually be with its software and hardware implementation of Force Touch technology. It's actually rumored that Samsung will pack a piece of tech called ClearForce from Synaptics 
which is much like 3D Touch or Force Touch um, found uh, in the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, as well as in many other Apple devices. But with that said, don't expect these devices to be cheap. These are flagship premium devices. Um, they're gonna be upwards of, I would say, six or $700 off contract. Um, now the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge will be officially announced on February 21st, one day before uh, MWC or Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. So um, the information I have provided, you know, is based off reliable leaks and rumors, but none of it is entirely confirmed. So please keep that in mind. Before you go, I have one question for you. Do you plan on purchasing the Galaxy S7 or Galaxy S7 Edge? Yes or no? I'd love to hear your thoughts and a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you're brand new. As always, I'm Bo HD, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.